got you into NLP in the beginning? How did you How did you start in NLP? It's a great question. I was an entertainer for many, many years. And when I was an entertainer, I also was doing some counselling and helping people. And I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just genuinely being there for people. Mm. And if you don't know what you're doing, then you end up, when you're talking to somebody who's having a really hard time, you actually do an exorcism with them. So you find out the terrible things they're going through. You take it on yourself. Uh. They walk away going, oh, thank goodness for that. And you've got to carry all this stuff around. Mm. And so um, I kind of stayed away from that whole experience after many years of working in it. But being a DJ and entertainer, um, I kind of came to an age where I didn't want to do that anymore. Mm. And what I wanted to do is get a cabaret act. And stage hypnosis was the one that brought me in. Oh, wow. I was fascinated okay. by the idea yeah. of walking into a room, doing a, 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 doing a, a really good show, getting paid and leaving before the DJ gets a chance to, to, to go. Um, and so to learn to do that, I realized that being based in Dubai, I'd never get a chance to learn to be a stage hypnotist because it just weren't any stage hypnotists at that time. Um, so what I could do was learn to be a hypnotherapist. Yeah. And I was so desperate to learn anything that had hypno in my title, I'd take it. So I learned <laughs> to be a hypnotherapist. Um, and then at the same time, the conversations with the people who were doing it was, are you going to do your NLP master prac? And I had no idea what NLP was, but because everyone was talking about it, I thought, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll do that as well, bring it on. Yeah. So uh, I learned that, went to Vegas to become a stage hypnotist. And when I came back, um, I found the whole thing just all kind of merged together. I found the stage hypnosis bit was fascinating because it was like the entertainment arm of it. And that was your, your proof that it really works mm -hmm. rather than stopping people smoking and losing weight, yeah. which work and don't work. When you do a stage hypnosis act, it's, it's you versus the audience. Mm. And it's a fascinating experience like that. And what I wanted to have with the, with the background of, of NLP and hypnosis is if I was doing a stage show and somebody said, I love this, can you help me to stop smoking? I didn't want to just go, maybe. Yeah, I wanted to be able yeah. to say, yeah, of course I can. Yeah. And actually know what the methodology was behind it. Because most of the, the guys that I saw becoming stage hypnotists were actually just ex-DJs who wanted to learn Is to do right? something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them. So they didn't have the, 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 the learning of the NLP background behind them. Yeah. And so I found the whole thing came together very well. But being based in Dubai, I did some amazing shows. It was fantastic. But the nature of being in this country is people don't like to lose face. They don't like to look okay. silly. Whereas if you're an Oz or a Brit or an American, you don't mind looking silly. And well, that was great show me the video. Oh my God, did I do that? But here it's not quite the same thing. Okay. So I found that I did some very strategic shows. If the bosses were Western thinking, then they'd invite me to do stuff with their, their team. Yeah. But if they weren't, all this sort of black magic, which many people have done before, okay, yeah, of then um, there's kind of like a wall between me getting the event or not. So I loved it. I've done enough of it. And the, the strange thing is, most stage hypnotists are aged between 40 and 60. Oh. There's something about your voice and that command and that power that happens at that age. So most of me, so I found that fascinating to do. I don't do that many of them anymore, but I have taken it on a world tour and I've done sort of South Africa. I've done yeah. gigs all around the planet, so it's been really fantastic. Amazing. So here we are at the NLP Global Summit. So just share with our members what they'll be learning from your presentation. Obviously, an incredible background. And, Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Well, I've been an entertainer and working in the entertainment industry for almost like five decades. I don't look that old, but trust me, I have. <laughs> and what I've done is I've taken all the learnings and things I've done with NLP, which has mainly been corporate training and motivation and doing gigs all around the world with like some Visa, MasterCard, uh, where long before anybody was doing guided med meditation, I did. What mm -hmm. I did with it was I created a thing called the Dream Experience before we called it that. And I actually had a CD that was a bestseller in the shops around the Middle East about 15, 20 years ago yeah. called Now That's What I Call Hypnosis. And it came out with Now That's What I Call Music People. Do you remember those? I do, CDs? yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, had, I had volume one of that, which I brought out, it was a bestseller. And what I used to do was I would perform that after doing some corporate motivation, drop everybody into trance state and then get them to visualize their f success in the future. And it was really good. Uh, and I had a lot of fun with that. So once I'd done all that, I wanted to then look at how you evolve into being better at what you do. Now, I know that NLP and coaches are all very, very excellent at doing it. So what happened was when I was doing my stage hypnosis shows, ultimately, before you do a stage hypnosis show and you ask people to come up out of the audience, you talk to them about how your mind works and you mm. basically get over all mm. their objections and so people volunteer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And being based in Dubai, 
many people turned around and said, you know what, Dave, we really love that bit at the beginning, um, but we don't actually need a show. Can you do that by mindset stuff for our staff? I said, well, are you going to pay me the same amount of money? He said, yes. I went, happy days. So that's <laughs> how my whole career as a motivational speaker started, mm. just speaking and about how And of course, how that's how works. we met. Exactly. Um, at the Domino Summit here. That was... Thank you. Yeah. So what I found was when I became a motivational speaker, and I also trained people to speak because I was an entertainer, working with CEOs and decision makers, politicians, celebrities, and, and hosting big events all around the world, like Rugby Sevens, which I did for 20 mm. years. Mm. And then when the pandemic hit, I found that there was a real, first of all, there was no events, there was no speaking gigs, yeah, and nobody course, needed yeah. to learn to speak. But I found that during that whole journey, because I'd worked and become like a, a celebrity in Dubai, and I was known by people around the world, part of that journey wasn't just about speaking, it's about branding, positioning mm. yourself so people mm. hire as a speaker. Yeah. And I realized that even though we didn't have speaking events, there were a ton of people who were very good at what they do, but didn't have an audience that bought into it. And so their businesses are going well, but they were invisible. Mm. And we're in a world now where the cult of personality is massive. Mm. So, for instance, when you look at the countries that we that we have and the, the politicians are, are voted in to run them, you've got to look at the likes of Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg, Steve Jobs and Jeff Bezos, who effectively are making money like a country. They also have the impact over, over, over continents mm. and they don't have to be accountable. So people like the, the cult of personality. They, they pay attention to Kardashians. If somebody says something, that that influence is really <laughs> yeah. important. So what I did was I created, during the pandemic, I think of the Industry Icon Program, which you're, you're aware of yourself, yeah, yeah. Um, where I work with people who are very good at what they do and help them to position and brand themselves so then they're seen by their industry or people who work in their industry as the best at what they do. And it doesn't mean that you have to be the best at what you do, but if you are with somebody who is better than you, but they have no voice or they have yeah. no image, then people will gravitate towards the one that's loudest and the one that can prove it. So I, I, I help them to create social proof and certainty, and then their speeches, and then their, their ability to brand themselves on the market with podcasts and TV shows and so on. So what I'm going to be sharing um, is how you go about that. And I realized that with the expertise that we have already in the audience, it's not about the mindset. I don't need mm. to teach people how to do that. Yeah. But a lot of it is imposter syndrome or not mm -hmm. believing that you're going to be good enough to do that. Yeah. Everybody carries a large amount of that. So I'll be sharing a few techniques I use for getting people over that bump, but also nuts and bolts, processes of taking what you know, getting out to a big audience. So understanding the use of podcasts and TV and social media and also speaking live on stages and how you should basically speak about your brand. Yeah. Don't talk about everything else. Talk about what leads back to your sales funnel that gets you gigs. Yeah. And so then you've got this incredible ecosystem where you're doing what you love, being paid for what you love, and gathering more and more people into your sales funnel and your, your tribe as you go. So I think it's an area that hasn't really been used properly, and certainly amongst the, the people in the healing and therapy and coaching mm. world, it's something that I think will be really powerful for them because post-pandemic, people are still turning to drugs and doctors yeah. as a way of getting over emotional and mental problems. Mm. And what it needs is a, is, is a fleet, an army of therapists and life coaches working with doctors and pharmacists to be the next wave of army or medical army to mm. help people get mm. over things mm. like taking drugs won't help. Yeah. So the more that we can help promote people to be out there and doing stuff, then the better the world will be. Yeah. So what I'm going to be sharing with uh, everybody is how to get yourself positioned well and create relationships with the pharmacies and the doctors and so on. So then your business will thrive and you can also do some real work with a steady flow of, 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 of customers who are referrals from the medical system. I love that. And when, when we spoke um, a while back, when we first started talking about the summit, and I remember one of the, and you have some wonderful sayings, and I love your quotes that come out because they really do stay, um, they do stay with the people that you share those with. And okay. one that came out was um, the next army you hoped would be the, an army of life coaches. And, uh, and I love that because I think, you know, the world needs it right now. Yes. Um, and, and one of the things in the back of my mind, putting the NLP Global Summit together, was to do that, was to bring everybody together mm -hmm. in the collective. Um, and I think, you know, that's what we're going, that's what we're going to be doing. And, you know, we've got some amazing speakers lined up. So really, really proud of that. So why was it important for you to be part of the NLP Global Summit? 
Well, I think that for me personally, it's about paying it forward. And I'm not so much in the therapy world um, or in the healing world as mm. I used to be before, but certainly for me, I feel that I've moved into an area where it's important to lead the next generation into where I used to mm. be. And so whether people become my clients or we just take enough from it to go off on their journey better, mm. I felt it was very important to see that the world is a better place by sharing what I've gone through and leaving a trail of breadcrumbs or a roadmap for other mm. people to follow on their own personal yeah, journey. Because that. what tends to happen is as a therapist and a healer, and I spent maybe 10, 20, no, about 10, 15 years in that particular space, you're waiting for people to come to you. Yeah. And so if you do it right, then word of mouth and referrals will mean that I want to stop smoking, I've got a childhood issue, or I'm having stress from work, all those things come through. But what we've got right now is almost like a hidden disease or a hidden challenge, which is people are emotionally burnt out. Mm. They're resigning from their jobs around the world. We talk about the quiet quitting, you know, mm. where people mm. just don't want to the resign. Great resignation. But, but yeah. leaving, all mm. that stuff. And these people need help because I did a survey recently on LinkedIn and it was basically, would you like to work from home? Would you like to go back to the office? Or would you become a digital nomad? And about 49% of people turned around and said, I'm already working from home, so I have no problem with that. Mm. Now, that's great. You see your family, you get a better work-life balance. Yeah. But what happens if things go wrong? Nobody's pay, paying attention to you. You haven't got an HR department who's checking yeah. in on you. You haven't got a water cooler you can chat to. Mm. What you need to have is create, just like you do your own insurance if you're a freelancer, you've got to create your own ecosystem that involves protection. So if you're starting your own business and you're doing it remotely or you've got a side hustle or your supplier um, that people are outsourcing to, then you need to have your sanity and your own way of dealing with it. And I think that's a massive market, especially digital nomads, that, that life coaches haven't tapped into mm. because those mm. people don't really know that they've got an issue. If you know you've got somebody who's coaching you, mentoring you, or working as a therapist or, or just helping you to plan where you go, then there's a ton of people that can work together yeah. with that. And so if I can help that happen, um, even by just suggesting it for my presentation, mm. then there's a job well done. Yeah, no, fantastic. And I love that. You know, I think um, isolation is a massive problem because even if, you're, even if you're working from home and you're on Zoom all day, you still aren't having that connection. And, and I think that's something that has, is creeping up on people that it becomes more difficult to go out, becomes more difficult to get back. I know where I, where I was living in Melbourne, um, in Australia, we were locked down for, I think it was 316 days. Wow. It was wow. massive. And you, you maybe aren't aware of how disconnected you become. And I think that's... It's prison. You know, it's it's, it's yeah. an open prison. So everyone's got a level of post-traumatic stress disorder mm. that they didn't even realize they're carrying around. Yeah. And because it looks like weakness in many ways to mention it, especially to a potential employer, you know, people mm. are just going to carry it until they explode or mm. until something worse happens. Yeah, no. You know, so I think it's very important to be able to, to lance that boil mm. and have those conversations. And not everybody's ready to deal with it. No. But people are making good money at home doing the remote thing. And if they can have a better work-life balance experience, and I think all the people who are watching the presentation I'm going to share yeah. will be able to do a lot of good with people all around the world as well, not just in their hometown. Mm. Brilliant. Fantastic. Um, what would you say to people that are thinking about joining us here at the Global NLP Summit? Um, it's a no-brainer. Here's the thing. <laughs> right now, the world is going through lots of different changes of digitization, the metaverse, and all the rest of it. But that's not the big story. The big story is as we automate and create technology and apps, people have to catch up. And so mm. there's more importance on people than we've ever had before. It doesn't seem like that, but the people that are going to be leading the way are the people who are attending the summit and the people who are learning to do self-improvement, personal development, and share that with others. We are going to be the new software for where the world is going. So it's so important that you attend, that you connect, that you will learn, and you continue that learning journey. If you don't do it, then not only are you missing out on the things that you can learn about yourself, but you might have a member of your family who needs help, but you don't have the tools and tricks and techniques or connections to be able to do it. So not only this event, but future events, immerse yourself. What's the worst that's going to happen? You kill a few hours learning a ton of stuff. What's <laughs> the best that can happen? It could change your life, your loved ones, and people around you. So it's a no-brainer.
it's on, you've got to be there. Brilliant, Dave. Thank you so much. Thank you for making the time to catch up. It's always wonderful to catch up. I love Dubai. I love catching up with you. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming to Dubai to meet me. Oh, you're very welcome. I just feel like I've won the lottery already. <laughs> love you too. Absolutely. Miss. You too. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. Yes.